This is the book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 1. It said, To the chief magician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him, after he had come, after he had gone into Bathsheba, have mercy upon me, O Yahweh, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. I want to start off saying all praise and glory due to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakar Kadash. Uh, double honest to our apostles, Elder Green Millstone, Shalom, Wakasa, Laha Bakyar, to the Lord's chosen out there, and uh, peace and mercy be unto the families out of the elect. All right, uh, I'm the brother Amar from the branch of GMS Cleveland. Uh, you know, I just want to you know make this quick video, man. Uh, Lord willing, this be edifying. Uh, but this is just pretty much going to be on the whole chapter of Psalms 51, and uh, I'm just going to kind of roll through, you know, what I mean, this whole chapter, and uh, you know, speak on some uh, key uh, verses. But, uh, you know, starting from the top, man, you know, King David said, uh, um, you know, uh, blot out my transgressions. And that's ultimately what we're asking the Heavenly Father to do, man, because we understand that, like how it says in Isaiah, you know, all our, our righteousness as as filthy rags. And then, uh, you know, for the most part, we have done, um, you know, wickedness. And we're asking the Lord to forgive us for, you know, the things that we have done. And not only in this life, but in our past lives, you know what I mean? So um, we can receive salvation. You know what I mean, and this is, uh, you know, these are these these are some of the things that the uh, the elect or the potential elect and the believers will do. They ultimately acknowledge their offenses, and uh, you know, um, ask ask the Lord uh, for mercy. You know what I mean, because of their actions. You know, but th uh, this is another thing too. The two thirds they won't do. They will. They they not going to do that. They they're not going to acknowledge their offenses. And they're not, they're not going to acknowledge the things that they've done. Uh, that's 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 um. That they have transgressed the heavenly Father's ways, and that they have done wickedly. In their eyes, they they don't think they do any evil, and that is why they're going to remain in that um, in that uh, in that state, you know. But this is uh, Psalms fifty one verse two. It says, "Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity." It says, "And cleanse me from my sin." And how does that happen? You know, that happens. Uh, let me let me get it real quick. You know, let me get it real quick. Bear with me one minute. Might be further up, might be down. Mm, uh, what is it? Is it this one? It says, Word of Thoughts, a young man cleans his way. Let's see, cleans. Let's lock it. Cleans his way. Taking he here we go. Psalms 119, verse 9. It says, Um, Beth, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word, man. You know, so that that that's how you're gonna um make that's how you're gonna be cleansed. That's how you're gonna be made clean. All right. The, the word cleans you up because throughout our whole life, man, we thought we was doing the right thing and stuff like that, and you know, we was just living our lives and you know, you thought you was a good person, but then you you know you realize that the way you were living or the way we were living, it, it wasn't good and it wasn't according to the way of the Lord. It might have been good according to this way, to this manner of life and to, you know, to the uh, average person. But in all actuality, it was wicked, you know. So going back to Psalms 51 and uh, 2. <sighs> it says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. It's like you wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And how does that happen? It happens with the word. It says, cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. And like I said, these are things that you that a believer will do. A true believer in true sincerity will acknowledge their transgressions. And they will also ask the Lord to pardon the way that they've been behaving. And even for our future uh, you know, actions that we would, you know, that will that we will do rather willingly or unwillingly. Uh it says verse four, against thee. The only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was sh shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So even from the womb, man, we was, we was already, um, we was through. You know what I mean? We was already, uh, you know, like the scripture, like like David just said, he shaped, he was shaping in iniquity. You know what I mean, because even when you look at like you know the way our mothers, you know, and our the way our mothers had us, man, they they more than likely, you know, you know, brothers and mothers wasn't virgins. You know what I mean, so right there from the jump, we was already, you know, we was already going off, man. 
you know, verse six, it says, behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Uh, it says, verse seven, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be withered whiter than snow. It says, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice, man. It says, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities, man. So once again, these are things that we're, that we're begging, not just asking, but we're begging the Heavenly Father to do. You know what I mean? We want him to, you know, to, to blot out our iniquities and, and, and have uh, mercy upon us, man. You know, like I said, because shit, man, we we in this flesh, man. And we, you know, we grew, we grew up in Babylon, the great. Most of us grew up with... um. You know, our so-called mothers, you know, not having, you know, real father figures or if there, there was a man in your life, he wasn't um, behaving in a manner such was, um, you know, was was righteous, you know. So, yeah, man, we, we just we just need mercy, man. And we, we want the Heavenly Father to have mercy upon us, man. It says, uh, verse 10, it says, create in me a clean heart, O Yahweh, and renew a right spirit within me. Now, what I like to do, I always jump from verse 10 to 13. Because it, it just makes more sense when you do that. But I, I will read the uh, 11 and 12 verse. But then I will go back just to show you that when you jump from the 10th verse to the 13th verse, it, it, it's, it's, it's beautiful. This is Psalms 51 verse um, uh, 11. Cast me not away, it says, from thy presence and take not take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And this is another thing that we, this is, this is one of the most important things that we're asking the Heavenly Father uh, not to do. You know what I mean? Um is, 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 is to not take his Holy Spirit from us, man. You know what I'm saying? Because we see what happened when uh, when that does happen. When you look at the situation with Saul, you know what I mean? The Benjamite, you know what I mean? That was a king over us during the time of David. All right. It, he had the Holy Spirit upon him. And then what, what happened when he disobeyed, man? All right. The Lord took the Holy Spirit from him. And he tried everything in his power to get it back. He even, you know, went to familiar, familiar spirits, which was you know, pretty much forbidden him. So he was desperate to get that, you know, to get that back, to get the Holy Spirit back. But once the Holy Spirit is taken from you, I mean, there are certain situations where the Lord can place it upon you. But, you know, I just want to play with fire. So ultimately, verse 11 is one of the key points that we're focusing on in this chapter. It says, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me, man. You know what I mean? Because like I said, once that happened, man, you you threw. You know what I mean? You you have, uh, you know, uh, more spirits cling to you, man. Yeah, I mean, let me, let me look that up. Seven more spirits. Yeah. Yep. This is uh uh Matthew twelve verse um. I'll start up above, man. Verse forty three. It says, "When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none." It says, and then he said, if I will return into my house from whence I came out, and when he came, and when he, and when he came, it says, and when he is come, he findeth empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell therein. And the last last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be uh, also uh, unto this wicked generation. Yeah, now this is dealing with an um obviously it said when the unclean spirit is going out of a man. You know what I mean? So if you have if you you know, if you have a situation where, you know, the, the demon leaves you, but then when you you know, you pretty much um I'm gonna read back to forty four, it says then he said, if, uh, I will return it unto my house from which I came out, and when he come in he find it empty, swept and garnished, then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So basically, that's dealing with, you know, what I mean, if you, if if a wicked or evil spirit, you know, um, gets uh, rebuked out of you or leaves you, you know, what I'm saying, whether it be you know, smoking demon or adultery demon or whatever the case is, man, uh, you know, you you was a person that was into, uh, you know, uh, Egyptology, you know, and that demon leaves you, and then and then you just so happen to go back to, uh, you know, those other demons. And then uh, it, it, you're gonna be worse, you know what I mean? Because it's gonna be more spirits that's gonna cling onto you, and then you're gonna be you're gonna be even worse than where you started, man. So that's that's basically what that's talking about. Um, it's like yeah, not to digress. Let me go back. And in this case, this is dealing with the Holy Spirit. When once the Holy Spirit leaves you, that's a that's a, that's a different story, man. You know, 
But um, verse 12, uh, it says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. It says, um, then will I teach. Now, uh, I like it. And I, I did say this too. I was going to jump. Uh, I'm going to go back to Psalms 51 and 10. And then I'll jump to 13. It says, create in me a clean spirit. Create within me a clean heart. Which that word clean means pure when you look it up. Create in me a clean heart. And that word heart is mind. Or, uh, you know, or, um, or uh, you know, mind. Or, or so it means clean mind. Uh, it says, um, oh, Yahweh, and renew a right spirit within me. Verse 13. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. So once, pretty much once the Lord clean you up, get you right. And he, um, you know, he, like I say, he, he gets you pure and gets you... In your right state of mind, then you can go out and teach others. If that doesn't happen, then they, you know you you won't be able to um bring forth meat, uh, fruit meat for repentance. Verse thirteen, I mean verse fourteen, deliver me from blood guiltiness, O Yahweh, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness, man. O Lord, open thou of my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise, man. And that's what we're doing, man. The Heavenly Father is ultimately giving us His um His Spirit, so we can go out there and teach. And uh, and we can show forth his praise, man. All right, whether it be to the heathens or to our own people, but ultimately we're supposed to go out there and show the world the heavenly Father um is the one that ruleth, man, and that ultimately is all because of him. Verse sixteen: For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of Yahweh are a broken spirit. It says a broken and a contrite heart. O Yahweh, thou wilt not despise. Yeah, and contrite means um, uh, broken in spirit by a sense of guilt. That's what the word contrite means. It says, when you look up the diction, the definition, contrite means broken in spirit by a sense of guilt. You know what I mean? Remorseful. And, and, and your resolve is not to sin again. That's what it means, man. You know? You you basically feel bad for what you did, and you and you and you... And your resolve is not to um, try to go down that path uh, um, ever again. But we know when we're in the flesh and that happens. So you just got to try your best not to, not to uh, do not to do the things that's against the Heavenly Father. Verse 18 and verse 19, I'm ending it off. It says, Do good and thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and, and, and whole burnt offering, then shall they uh, offer bullocks upon thy altar, man. So yeah, man. Basically, um, I mean, we just we just pray. Obviously, like I said, some key verses that I wanted to focus on is um, you know, the first one, uh, you know, two and three, and then uh, you know, verse um, ten, eleven, and twelve and thirteen. You know what I mean, because those are the things that out of this chapter I found, uh, you know, I'm gonna say of more um. Not of more importance, but uh, uh, you know, just going to according to the uh, lesson of more significance, man. You know what I'm saying? Because verse twelve, last verse, it says, "Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit." Because ultimately, these are the things that we're praying to the heavenly Father that He do, or that He does. You know what I'm saying? Restoring to us the joy that we once had, man. Because right now, Jake catching hell. You know, you look outside. You know, you you know, you talk to Jake and you talk to you know people. You you know, talk to your people. Our people, man, you know, Jake is, uh, you know, they're out of it, man. They're through, they're gone, you know, they, they don't have any uh, guidance. And ultimately, you can tell they just need help, um, you know. But And then it says, uphold me with thy free spirit, man. So, look at that word, uh, free is going to mean uh, noble, you know, princely. You know what I mean? So, we just begging the Heavenly Father that he have mercy upon us. And then he take not the Holy Spirit away from us. And, and ultimately, that he restore unto us salvation. Because this shit right here, it ain't, it ain't what's up, man. I would say shalom.